good morning. It's Monday, June 7th, 2010. We're at the Community Media Center. My name is Jim Mayola, and it's my pleasure to be interviewing Ms. Maggie Langdon. Hi, Maggie. Hi, how you doing? I am wonderful. How are you? Good. Good. Now, you've lived in Carroll County, I think you've told me, since you were seven years old? Yeah, since 1954. 1954, you were seven. Okay. And Tell me about moving into Carroll County. It, where did you come from? We came from Catonsville. Okay. So this was a little different, wasn't it? Yes. I'm, I don't think my mother was real happy. She was a city girl, and moving to the country, I think, was a shock for her. Now, was this country in 1954? Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, tell me about your move here. Well, we, they loaded the moving van the day before and put the freezer on the tailgate. We had a, a chest freezer, and so they took it then to the garage overnight and plugged it in. Mm -hmm. The next day, my mother and I are driving to Westminster, and we got to Town, where there's still a gas station, I think, at the intersection. I said to my mother, that's our moving van parked in the, in the gas station. No. I said, no, it's the freezer on the tailgate. We stopped, and the, the uh, driver who had the van that day was not the driver who had loaded it the day before, and he didn't have the directions. And so he figured he was heading off into the middle of nowhere and had no idea where he was going. So he then followed us up, and we had built a house. My dad had built a house on Cranberry Road, right up above where the mall is today. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we moved in there. And of course, at that point, there was nothing on okay. Route 140. When you got to Westminster Center Street, didn't even come to 140 at that point. No kidding. And so. Now 140, that's the 140 we know today, right. which we was actually the bypass right. for Main Street, okay. known as the highway okay. at that point. How interesting. And uh, so as I was growing up, my elementary school years, there was no school bus that came up there. So my mother had to take me to school. And to get to East End Elementary, mm -hmm. which is where I went to elementary school, we had to come out of Cranberry Road onto 140, go up to Gorsuch Road, okay. go in, and then come back around no kidding. to get to the school. Because yeah. obviously the center street didn't go through. There was no way to get in. Well, so there's limited access then mm -hmm. to Route 140 at that time. Right. Very interesting. But that I think it was that fall after we moved in, they finished 140, and the last thing that they finished was the bridge mm -hmm. over 27. And the day they dedicated that bridge, they had a big ribbon cutting, and I think the governor was there, and I don't know. The, one of the worst thunderstorms I have ever seen in my life. The sky almost turned green. Wow. And just as they c were cutting the ribbon, of course, we're sitting up on the hill looking mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. The heavens opened. <laughs> and the governor and everybody got very wet, I think, that day of opening that bridge. Well, that was not a <laughs> not a very auspicious start to no. the event. <laughs> but, uh, now, how old would you have been at that time? Were you seven or seven. two? Okay. Yeah, I was seven at that so point. Seven years old, going to East East End East Elementary. End Elementary. I was in second grade at that okay. point. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, that school had originally been Westminster High School, okay. and I think at one time had three three floors, mm -hmm. but now only has two. The mm -hmm. story was the top floor was condemned and taken off at one point. Mm. But when we were in fourth grade, they had what they called the portables. They were four right. little wooden buildings. Mm -hmm. And the one we were in was the very last part of the building to get heat. So if the janitor didn't get there early enough in the morning to fire up the furnace, we didn't have any heat. No kidding. And so, so I remember several days they sent us over to play with the first graders mm -hmm. for the morning because it was too cold to be out in that old wooden building. No <laughs> And, and you said that uh, when you were a school child that you used to have the, um, the air raid drills. Yes, we did. Okay. And I'm not sure at this point whether the sign is still on the front of that building or not okay. that says air raid shelter. Okay. That sometimes it was under your desk and cover your head. Other mm -hmm. times it was out in the hall mm -hmm. along the wall and right. cover your head. Right. And I never could quite figure out what good that was going to do us if they dropped the bomb. <laughs> but that was the, that was well, the drill. Well, hopefully they would <laughs> drop it far enough away that it wouldn't affect no, us. No, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know that that would have done any good at all at that point. But, uh, you know, that was the standard procedure mm -hmm. back then. So you went to elementary school in Westminster and middle school? Well, we 
through fourth grade at East End, then mm -hmm. we went to fifth grade at what had been Westminster Elementary School, which is across from the county office building okay. there on Center Street. Mm -hmm. And then after our fifth grade year, they built Westminster Junior High School, mm -hmm. brand new school, which is now West Middle. Okay. And so we were, we were there for three years. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then I was able to start riding the bus. And of course, back then, all the schools opened at the same time. There were no staggered openings as mm -hmm. there are now. Right. So from first grade all the way through high school, we're, we're all on the same bus. And oh. the buses went from one school to another and mm -hmm. dropped people off. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be on what they called the second bus. So we would sit around after school for a half hour, 45 minutes, waiting for the bus to come. Sure. Now, did you go to Westminster High School? Went to Westminster High School, which is now East Middle School. East Middle School, okay. So we uh, we were there for four years. Um, <laughs> the one thing I remember particularly was graduation. Um, I played in the orchestra, okay. and we were the last ones in the class to get our diplomas. And they, they finished the class, and then they did the orchestra in alphabetical order, and I happened to be at the very end. And I got up there, and they were a diploma short. <laughs> oh no. I, uh, I got no <laughs> diploma. So have you ever graduated? Yes. Okay. In fact, <laughs> what had happened, the, the, the last person in the class got, somehow they gave that person two. They oh. had the folders. Okay. And so in the orchestra, the, the fellow ahead of me got my diploma. Okay. And I had told my parents before graduation, I said, you watch, I'll get up there and, and they won't have a diploma for me. And they said my mother about fell out of the bleachers laughing because <laughs> it was <laughs> I was thinking, that was the longest walk I ever took, and came back with nothing. But it wasn't funny at the time. No, I thought it was hysterical. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed all the way back, because there was no question I was getting a diploma. But of I just, course. Um, Sam Jenis was the superintendent of schools at that time, and Steve Lerter was the, the principal at Westminster High School, and you never saw two more embarrassed gentlemen in your life. <laughs> well, it was just a mistake. Yeah, that was, yeah, but I thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> What was Westminster like when you were going to grade school and high school? Well, uh, of course, at that point, all the shopping was downtown. There was, again, there was nothing on 140. Right. Westminster Shopping Center had not yet been built. That mm -hmm. was the first shopping center to have been built. And mm -hmm. so I recall the co-op store, grocery store, being where Locust Lane is now off the city parking lot. No kidding. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Acme store was where Wheeler car dealership is, and the A&P was across the street in, the, in that other building that mm -hmm. I think the county owns it now, right. and, and okay. so that was the A&P store. No kidding. And that's yeah. where you, you know, went for groceries, mm -hmm. and then of course downtown you had Mathers and Hoffman Fisher, um, Reed's and Rexall uh, drug stores, okay. both had soda fountains okay. at the time. Right. Um, B.T. Murphy's is where Johansson's is now. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, can remember, I was talking with my husband about this, and he says he remembers his mother to go shopping in Westminster would put on a dress and hat and mm -hmm. gloves mm -hmm. just to go to the store. Mm -hmm. It was never a thought of you know, jeans and tennis shoes or right. anything back then. You dressed up to he go out. You dressed up to sure. go out to yeah. go shopping. Yeah. Now, what were the shopping days? Did you guys go once a week to go buy groceries, or did you have a regular schedule? How did it go? How my did it mother work? tended to shop when she needed things. As okay. I say, she was a city. Mm -hmm. You know, city oriented, and right. so she just, if she needed something, she got in the car and went to the mm -hmm. store. I've heard yeah. that downtown Westminster was very um, busy on Fridays and Saturdays. That's what, yeah. Of course, all the country people would come into town right. and park, and mm -hmm. people would walk up and down the street and they'd do their weekly shopping. Yeah. It was, I guess, quite a big event at that point. Now, you mentioned several of the stores. I'm not sure everybody knows what they were. Uh, the you na named Math them by name. Mathers was a department store, okay. which is where Coffee Music is now. Okay. Kaufman Fisher was another department store. Okay. Uh, G. C. Murphy's was a five and dime. Sure. Um, the Globe, which I I think may still be in one of the shopping centers, was a men's clothing store that was downtown. Mm -hmm. Sue's Music was downtown oh. for years. Okay. And so it was. That was the shopping area. Very you know, even unless you wanted anything else, you had to go to your city, mm -hmm. and then you really got dressed up. Which was Baltimore. Which was Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And one of the other things that I, I specifically remember about being in school, you know, the kids complain about dress codes today. Well, the girls back then were not allowed to wear slacks at all. Mm -hmm. 
the boys could not wear jeans. Right. And I don't think you were allowed to wear sneakers. Because mm -hmm. again, my husband said he remembers wearing penny loafers on white socks mm -hmm. with his with his trousers. Mm -hmm. So there was, you know, it was unheard of that girls should wear pants at all back yeah. then. Now, um, when I was uh, coming up, because we're almost the same age. Um, girls always had to wear skirts, but in the wintertime when you go on the playground, they'd bring trousers to put under their skirts, and they'd run around in the playground with um, trousers under yeah. their skirts. I don't know if you did that. Well, I girl. can remember wearing shorts, shorts. Under, uh, for yeah. the warm weather right. to go outside in yeah. elementary school. But yeah, that was yeah, shorts were not allowed. No. no. Right. And, you know, I don't know how my kids survived, would have survived going to school without jeans. <laughs> well, these are different times. These are different times. Yeah. So, um, you grew up in Westminster. What did your family do? My dad, uh, actually, we moved up here. He went to work for a B.F. Shriver, mm -hmm. a canning factory. Okay. And, and do you my mother stayed home. Do you remember what he did at the canning factory? I think he ran the factory. Okay. And, of course, then and when I was uh, toward college, I spent my summers working at Shriver's. It was and quite a summer job. And what did you do? Tell me about uh, that. Did some weighing in of of the corn wagons, they'd bring wagons in corn, then I'd go over in the factory and ran a corn cutter. Mm -hmm. And we'd work 13 hour days. Wow. Six days a week in season. Okay. Because of course it had to be done. Sure. Yeah, there was no waiting. Sure. Now you got um, produce from the local, local farms here. Yeah, Shriver's okay. had farms all over the county. Right. And in fact, where the where uh, the mall is now was Shriver's Miller Farm, that's mm -hmm. what it was called. Mm -hmm. And that was um, went all the way down to 27, and wow. of course there was it was woods down there right. by 27, mm -hmm. and it was a marshy area on mm -hmm. one side where they've since built up and built townhouses I think on the side of the mall there. Right. I know the first time I drove around behind the mall after it was built, looked up the hill and thought, my gosh, we used to sled down this hill. No kidding. Because our house is still there. Is still it? At the on yeah. yeah, up on top of the hill. Good. So you did, um, when you worked at Shriver's, they did corn, I guess they did tomatoes? No, not at the oh, factory in Westminster. Okay. They did corn, beans, and peas. Corn, beans, and, and peas. They then they did them during the season when they yeah, were coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about what would be the process for corn, let's say, because you worked on the corn. Well, they bring the wagons in, mm -hmm. They'd, uh, and this was located where Westminster Warehousing is now, in okay. Carroll County Pines Building mm -hmm. in that area. Okay. They'd bring the wagons in, you'd weigh them. And they'd take them over what they call the dump shed, and they'd put them on some kind of a, a thing that would tilt, mm -hmm. dump it in. They'd go through the, the huskers, and then from there, uh, they would go to the cutters. And you stood, you had a uh, cu actually a cutter on each side of you, and you did this kind of a motion to feed it, to feed the ears right. into the cutters. And then, of course, then they went through the, the washers and the they can them. Now the cutters actually cut the kernels off, off of the husk? The ear, off yeah. The, off the, uh, yeah. And, then, and then they'd be washed and canned. And canned. And are they, they're cooked? Yeah, they can them, they put them in the can and right. they put the cans in a pressure pressure cooker. Very interesting. And, and then label them and out they and went. out they go, yeah. Amazing. Very noisy operation. And probably a lot labor intensive. Mm -hmm. You did a lot of work and hot. Yes. yes and very. wet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Because of course there's water sure. everywhere, sure. And that was a problem I think that Westminster had. Uh, Coons Creamery was over on John Street, mm -hmm. close to where Southern States is now. Right. And if they were drawing a lot of water and Shriver's was drawing a lot of water, the city would get very upset <laughs> because then well they, they, have, they have water problems. Yeah, and low pressure. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Wow. Some of the challenges that we face and we don't even think about that yeah, today. Yeah, and I'm sure yeah. that you know. There had been OSHA back then mm -hmm. had come into that factory. They'd have been appalled because mm -hmm. you know the, the belts that ran the machinery were not covered. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. old were you? I guess I was probably seventeen when okay. I did that. Yeah. I worked four summers yeah. down there. And you said thirteen-hour days, mm -hmm. unheard of today. Corn. Oh yeah, six days a week. Yeah, unheard of. Yeah, times have certainly changed oh, yeah. when it comes to that. Thanks. Well, how much did you make an hour? When I started the first year, minimum wage was a dollar and a quarter. And I worked four years, and I think the fourth year it was a dollar sixty. Wow, you had arrived. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we thought we were doing really great. <laughs> but it, it was interesting, and mm -hmm. we—they also had a group of migrant workers mm -hmm. that came through and worked uh, 
well, most of them in the factory, that crew. And mm -hmm. they had a place that they lived where the Carroll County Times building is now. Oh, interesting. This was during the height of the season. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they would move. I think this group would start in Florida, and mm -hmm. they'd move up the coast. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once they finally got to the end of the season, a little yeah. further north, then they'd go back to Florida for the winter. No kidding. Very interesting. It yeah. was an interesting group of people. I bet. Yeah. So what else can you tell me about Carroll uh, County? One thing I, that I remember th were the winters. Mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, people say, oh, we don't have the winters that we had when I was growing up, and I think it's true. Mm -hmm. We'd get snowstorms up there on Cranberry Road, and as the road came up from 140, it made a slight curve, mm -hmm. and there were banks on either side. Right. The wind would blow, and those banks would, the snow would drift level, right? and sure. they could not get a plow through. They literally would have to come with a bulldozer no and open it. And we did that for a couple of years till somebody in the county finally came up with the idea, gee, let's put up snow fence. Right. And we put up maybe 100 feet of snow fence, and that took care of it. Yeah, just, just where it was blowing. Just where it just was blowing. Just that and caused and the drift to be mm -hmm. there instead of across the right. road. And so that was, but the Amazing. couple of years that that happened, one year specifically, people would come up Cranberry Road from the other end mm -hmm. and literally drive head on into this snowdrift till they couldn't go any further. Well, they, they and, couldn't and they couldn't tell how deep it was. I don't know, yeah, because yeah. it was deeper than the car. Sure. I don't know why they just drove headlong into it. And so my father and our neighbor, who had a pickup truck, they'd go out with a chain and they'd mm -hmm. haul these people out and turn them around and send them back. Having done that a number of times, my father parked his car across the, the road so mm -hmm. they couldn't go any further. And we'd have people come to the door saying, please uh, move your car yeah. so I can yeah. get, get through. And he'd right. say, no, we should just back up here in our yard, turn yeah. around and go back. Right. But people get very irate because his yeah. car was in the way. Yeah. But, but they'd be more irate if they'd gone out and gotten stuck. Yeah, yeah. right. And your dad didn't need the aggravation no. to try to pull him out. <laughs> Not being the most patient person <laughs> in the world, he got a little tired of that. I bet. And Westminster, and during a snow like that, would close Westmoreland Street mm -hmm. for sledding. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. And so everybody in town would have a place to sled. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, the community pond would freeze, and yeah. the grapevine would get the word around, yeah. and we'd all go ice skate. No kidding. On the, com on the community pond. Yeah. And the community pond is where it is today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they haven't moved that. No, they haven't moved okay, that. Well, that's a good <laughs> thing. Yeah. But, uh, and of course, you know, closing a street now for sledding, I'm sure, would be unheard of. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> because yeah. of the... Now, did you miss many days in school because of uh, we snow? We missed some, mm -hmm. although I think they're quicker today mm -hmm. to close than they were back yeah. then. It feels like it. Uh, okay. People are more worried about safety issues. Well, I guess. I, you know, I guess this maybe this is not politically correct, yeah. but most of the bus drivers then were men. Mm -hmm. Most of them today are women, yeah. or a great majority of yeah. them. But I drove a bus for a while when mm -hmm. I got out of college, and mm -hmm. you know the roads looked like they were bad. You put chains on the bus, and, mm -hmm. and off you went. But yeah, not anymore. No, and the yeah. contractor I drove for, he said, if there's any place you feel uncomfortable, yeah. he said, just don't. You know, just if it's down a hill or something, mm -hmm. you're not comfortable. He said, just don't go. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it didn't used to be like that. No. No, they just went. Well, that was, you know, now, mm -hmm. you know, they, they don't go to school. <laughs> well, you told about some of the things that you did in the wintertime for entertainment. What did you do in the summertime for entertainment? I mostly stayed home. Mm -hmm. um, we were just far enough out of town that it was too far to walk anywhere. Yeah. And so, and one of the things my dad did when he built the house was put central air in, mm -hmm. which was most unusual in the middle 50s sure. to have an air-conditioned house. Yeah. So we were, we were real happy. Yeah, I <laughs> bet. <laughs> Sitting there. So now you're living in a house on Cranberry Road, mm -hmm. which is up behind where the mall is yeah. now. And we think of that as part of Westminster now. Right. I mean, that's part of the city. But then the city was actually a mile away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it, was, very interesting. it was just far enough yeah. away that yeah. it was really too far to walk. Mm -hmm. um, so so it was a big event to go to the city. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. I also uh, recall when they start, first started building the hospital. Mm -hmm. Of course, back then there was no hospital in Carroll County. Right. This was in the 50s. If you needed something, you went to Baltimore, mm -hmm. or okay, I think occasionally to Hanover. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, I, I remember a cookie sale that they had to start raising money for the hospital. And if 
where the hospital obviously is now, there was just a little health department building. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the small hospital was built. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the last you know, 50 years, I guess, it's grown to what it is now. Mm -hmm. But it was just very small at that Started point. Got very modest. Yeah. And I guess grew with the community. Right. How about the Farm Museum? Do you remember when the Farm Museum was established? Uh, not specifically, mm -hmm. though. I know the, the uh, the Farm Museum back then was the almshouse, right. was the county almshouse up until mm -hmm. the 60s, I mm -hmm. think, sometime in the 60s, until you know, it was developed into what it is today. Mm -hmm. And of course, that also has grown mm -hmm. tremendously. Now, Maggie, you mentioned you played in the high school orchestra. What did you mm -hmm. play? <laughs> I played violin. Played violin? Very badly. <laughs> Violin's <laughs> not an easy instrument to well play. They, they didn't catch me young enough. Oh, I okay. didn't start until I was in high school. Okay. But uh, they th at that point they had all county orchestra, mm -hmm. and they would take anybody who, who could pick up a stringed instrument was in county orchestra. So the first year I was in county orchestra, I was last chair, second violin. Okay. The second year I was in, I was a senior. I was second chair first because I was a senior. Oh. <laughs> now you've um, you've continued with your musical career, have you not? Yes. Okay. Tell me a little yeah. bit about that. Went to Gettysburg College, majored in music in mm -hmm. organ. Mm -hmm. and, uh, played as a, as a church musician on a regular basis for a number of years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, stopped doing that regularly. I still do play mm -hmm. occasionally and switched over to uh, started playing bass in a bluegrass band. Mm -hmm. What, a, I what did a change. For about 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I just picked up the bass and started playing that. And, and now I actually play with your group. Mm -hmm. So you still play bass? So, so I still play bass. Mm -hmm. I also play hammer dulcimer and mm -hmm. uh, piano and handbells and a number so of things. You're a very eclectic musician. You play... <laughs> That's um, a good word. It is. You play <laughs> uh, church services, still mm -hmm. on, a, uh, I would, not a regular basis, but routinely. Routinely, yeah. yeah. And um, you, you play a very fine piano, very fine organ, very fine keyboards. But um, you also played for a number of years doing bluegrass music, basically heritage music, the, mm -hmm. mu the music of, uh, you know, from, from the very beginnings of this country. And so have you ever done Common Ground on the Hill? Have you ever? I, for a couple of years, mm -hmm. I took classes there, mm -hmm. which is where I really uh, learned some more about the hammer dulcimer mm -hmm. that I play. That's not an easy instrument to play, is it? No, it's fun. Yeah. It's a fun instrument. It's yeah. harder to tune than anything yeah. else. It sounds <laughs> so pretty, and it looks yeah. so easy, but I would be lost on something <laughs> like that. I can only play one note at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a fun instrument. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can play a great variety of music on it, from mm -hmm. Celtic, Appalachian. I do some uh, church work with mm -hmm. it. So, yeah. I actually heard Walt Michaels one time doing some Michael Jackson. So you're right. You can play anything, anything. on it. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty amazing. So is there anything else you'd like to tell us today? Any other stories um, about growing up in Carroll County? I, I do recall when we moved to Carroll County, there was no such thing as a dial telephone. What did you use? <laughs> you, well, our phone number was 325. 325. You, you picked up the receiver and you okay. got the operator and okay. you told her the number that you wanted. Okay. And Now, we were not on a party line, mm -hmm. but I think that was fairly common mm -hmm. at the time, too. And when we did finally get dial, uh, dial service, Westminster's exchange was Tilden 8. Tilden 8. eight. I remember okay. when I was a little boy that everything was a name and a number. So right. it was TI8. It was TI8, eight, which okay. actually was 848, which okay. is what it is today. No kidding. And uh, they, I remember hearing a story one time, I think it was on the radio, mm -hmm. that I don't know whether the, the person was blind or if there was just an emergency, it was dark, and they mm -hmm. said, oh, wasn't it wonderful that he figured out what the numbers were mm -hmm. for the letters. For the letters, <laughs> yeah. Wow. But of course, yeah. nowadays, they just use the numbers. Just use the numbers. When we were married in the s early 70s. We moved to Manchester, and even then, in order to make a long-distance call, you had to, to dial the operator, mm -hmm. tell her what number you wanted, mm -hmm. and she would ask you what number you were calling from mm -hmm. for the billing. Right. So they did everything by hand then? Yeah. Yeah. You actually had a phone number that was three digits. Mm -hmm. Some wow. of them I know were only two. Amazing. Yeah, that tells you how few people had telephones then. Yeah. yeah. 
how um, what a what a difference. Now everybody walks around with cell phones. Right. I, I don't know how we lived without them. <laughs> everybody has multiple numbers now. Yeah. How interesting. Interesting. So, anything else? Mm. Oh, I do uh, another story that I remember when we would went to get our driver's licenses at mm -hmm. 16. Mm -hmm. You went to the basement of the old armory, the building on Longwell Avenue. Okay. You went down there, took your, your written test, went out, parallel parked on the street there, and made four right turns around the parking lot. That was the driver's test. And that was the driver's that test? That was the driver's test. Now, was that the state police barracks then? I think it was city police. City police, and that's where you get your driver's license. Because mm -hmm. that's now a, a um, this the family, family center is center, there, yeah. The gym, yeah. yeah, where the gym is. Yeah, yeah, but that was in the basement. How interesting! And if you, if you went during school, that was an excused absence. Okay. If you, if I went, got mine in the morning right. and went back to school. Right. And you passed the first time. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And of course, the uh, Baltimore Colts had their training camp at. Well, then Western Maryland. Western Maryland, yeah. They okay. stayed in the dorm. Okay. They were very accessible to the public. You'd see them at Balkers or at Harry's oh, downtown. No yeah. yeah. Wow, well, how interesting. Yeah. So, you know, they didn't come in their Hummers with their big screen TVs back right. then. They came right. and lived in the dorms. A lot of those guys, I think, worked during the off season. No kidding, yeah. yeah. So you'd see them around town? Yeah. Wow, how interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so very was different. It, it was different yeah. back then. As I say, they were very accessible, very mm -hmm. willing to sign autographs. Now, did you ever go to the movies as a child, as a as a teenager? Did you ever come? Yeah, there were there were two theaters in Westminster mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. The State Theater, which was where um, John Street comes into Main Street, mm -hmm. and of course the Carroll, which is now the, uh, the Arts, Arts Council. Arts, Arts Council. Right. There was a, a gentleman in Westminster. Whom I'm sure a lot of people remember his name was Tom Dixon. Mm -hmm. He was uh, the custodian at Grace Lutheran Church when I was uh, the assistant organist there, and I'd be mm -hmm. practicing, and he would come in and he'd say, "Well, you know, Virgil Fox used to practice at the State Theater. You know, Virgil Fox mm -hmm. was a very well-known yeah. uh, concert organist mm -hmm. at that point, and he mm -hmm. said I remember him practicing at the State Theater." Mm -hmm. Now, what was his association with the State Theater then? I, th I think he was from this area, yeah. and that was just where he was okay. able to go yeah. to but practice. But Tom Dixon, wasn't he the... He may have been the custodian yeah, there the as well. At the I'm theater, yes. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I think he was the projectionist. Yeah. yeah. Very but interesting. Hearing stories about Virgil Fox yeah. in Westminster, wow. to me as an organist, was, yeah. was quite interesting. Very interesting. Now, I understand there used to be a drive-in movie theater in Westminster. Did you know anything about that? Yeah, it was the Ridge okay. drive-in um, near where Westminster High School is okay. now, yeah. right in that, in that general area. Okay. And I think one of the, the boys that was in our class in high school, I think his father ran it mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. his, uh, his name was uh, Kyle, I think. Okay. But yeah, that was very interesting. That was one of the local hangouts. hangouts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. And of course, the treat shop was across from the Carroll Theater. Okay. At that time, and so that's where you went and got all your candy and everything. So is that where Ernie's is now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Used to be the treat shop. Used to be the treat shop. I guess years. some people still think of it as the treat shop. I even guess, though it's I guess yeah. so. <laughs> okay. How interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it was very different. Yeah. Of course, as I say, Center Street didn't go through. Mm -hmm. And I think when they, f they finally did put it through, they built Westminster Motors, mm -hmm. which is now in Solar. Mm -hmm. And on the, <coughs> excuse me, the lot next to that along 140, they used to have, that's where they used to have the circuses. They'd set up and have, so and I remember yeah. at least one or two horse shows that they mm -hmm. had there as well. So that was like the Ag Center is now. Yeah, it now just happened to be yeah. in a big empty right. lot, and that's where the. Right in town. Well, right on yeah. 140 yeah. there, on well. the highway. Yeah, <laughs> how interesting. Well, what if if you had to say <laughs> one thing that's been the biggest change since 1954, when you were seven years old and you saw Westminster for the first time, what would you say is the biggest change, the biggest transformation that you've seen? I think it's gone from being a small, basically a small town, to being more of a, a metropolis, mm -hmm. more of a city. You know, I look around and go, where did all these people come from? Mm -hmm. Because there was not a traffic light on 140 from Town all the way up here. And I was sitting this morning trying to figure out how many they are, there are, and I think I got to 15. There, no traffic lights at all? Mm -hmm. You just went through? I just came right on through because there was nothing there. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was nothing. You were driving through the country at that point. Wow. 
but intersections. Some, yeah. yeah. Like but I mean, Cranberry Road yeah. went on to on 140, but right. there was so little traffic that, that it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. People just waited. Yeah. Yeah. No stop sign. And, you know. Yeah. And of course, Westminster was great for not having a square intersection at mm -hmm. Main Street mm -hmm. because John Street and Bond Street right. didn't match. Um, okay. Railroad Avenue and Liberty Street didn't match. Okay. And of course, Washington Road and Old Manchester Road still don't. Right. <laughs> and so they've squared up a couple of them mm -hmm. and taken buildings down. Lincoln Road came from Green Street one way to Main Street. The alley that came up from uh, the playground, mm -hmm. which came to Main Street, they were both one way in opposite directions. So they these two one-way streets streets met head on on Main, on Street. Main Street. Very <laughs> Which interesting. I thought was, you know, only in Westminster would two mm -hmm. one-way streets run head on into yeah. each other. Yeah. Interesting city planning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it almost yeah. seems like they built half the city and the other half, but right. they didn't line them up. Right. <laughs> like the west part was done by one person and the east part was yeah. done by another person and, and they, they just didn't quite jive. They didn't quite jive, yeah. yeah. Very interesting, but we've worked out a lot of those kinks over oh time. Yeah. 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 Has it been a nice place to grow up? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it's a nice place to live and a nice place to grow yeah. up. Yeah. I, d I did have a friend in high school who said when he went to college, if he came back to Westminster from college and there was a McDonald's, he was not going to stay. Mm -hmm. And there was. And, and he didn't. He <laughs> moved to Colorado. Because <laughs> they don't have McDonald's in Colorado. Well, I think they do now. Yeah, but I'm not they sure do. they did in Grand Junction, Colorado <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Uh, you'd have to go a long ways to get away from McDonald's because yeah. they're everywhere now. Yeah, all over the world. <laughs> well, Maggie, it was really a pleasure speaking to you today. You told us some great stories, well, very interesting. Um, Carroll County has certainly changed. Mm -hmm. Westminster has really changed in the last mm -hmm. 40 or 50 years. Um, I imagine it's going to be very different in 40 more years. But um, sure. we probably won't be around to say it, mm -hmm. but we can leave this message for those who are. So thank you again for taking the time to come here today and share your story with us. Oh, thanks for having me.